and our affections towards you, O Father. That you are the creator of the heavens and the earth and all things therein that our eyes can behold and see. You created seasons and times, Lord, a time of refreshing, a time of war, a time of peace. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. And today we look to you, O oh Lord, You are, Father, our substance. You are our life. You are our light. You are the lifter of our heads, O oh Lord. You are comfort and you are love. And we just want to thank you, Yahweh. Father, we thank you, Father, for the valleys. We thank you for the mountains, O oh Lord. We thank you, Lord God, that you said and promised us that you would never leave us nor forsake us. We thank you, Father, that we can look to you in hope and in trust that you will meet our needs, O oh Lord. Thank you that you provide for us, O oh Father. That we can trust in you. We thank you that you are the beginning and the end, O oh Father. And that you are our in-between, O oh Lord. That you answer us when we call unto you. We thank you, Yahweh. And as we go into the study, O oh Father, of the works of the Spirit, Lord, give us understanding. Help us to understand, Father, what the Holy Spirit wants to accomplish in us, O oh Father. How you want us to live, how you want us to interact with people, O oh Lord. Father, if we are lacking in anything, reveal that to us, O oh Lord. But you said in your word that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Strengthen us, O oh Father, to live this life the way that you want us to live it, Lord. We are living in dangerous and hard times, O oh Father. And Father, you, this, the, you are giving us signs to show, Father, that probation period is ending, O oh Lord. Oh, Father, cleanse us and wash us with his sop that we may be clean, O oh Lord. Wash us, O oh Father, that we, Father, may one day be in your presence. And if we have an odd against anyone, Lord, we forgive them right now, Lord. We forgive those who have offended us. We forgive those who have hurt us. We forgive those who have offended us, O oh Lord. We forgive, O oh Father. And we release them in your forgiveness, O oh Lord. Father, we ask that you forgive us of our shortcomings. That you forgive us of our sins, O oh Lord. And that you would wash us from all unrighteousness by the blood of your Son, Yeshua. As we seek your face, O oh Lord, today, we ask that you would speak to our hearts, O oh Lord, through your words. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Yahweh. In Yeshua's name.
the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils. And the man became a living person. Living within us. Pronounced Yod, He, Vav, He, Yahweh. A name often considered too sacred to speak. Never to fail or forsake. Each person's life is but breath. Unending promise. God's divine breath flows through you and those around you. Heaven inside us. When you breathe, you let God in. Whispers the sound of your name. Jesus called out with a loud voice. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. Holy is the Lord, the breath of life inside us. Yahweh, let everything that has breath praise the Lord.
good afternoon, beloved. Good afternoon, Stevie and Zoe. Um, blessed be the name of the Lord. I want to read uh, Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. And it reads, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. And God blessed, spoke good of the seventh day, set it apart as his own, and hallowed it. Because on it God rested from all his work which he had created and done. Now a lot of people, um, when I tell them that I don't work on the, the Sabbath day, they want to connect me with the seventh day of Venice. I am not with the seven day of Venice. I keep the Sabbath day because Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 to 3, God has set that day aside for himself and, um, and he hollowed it. And later on in Exodus, he repeats it again. We must remember that when the children of Israel were in bondage for 400 years, those things were lost. From that time, uh, from Adam to the time that the children of Israel went into bondage in Egypt, they kept the seventh day. Now, the word of God was not written as of yet, but the, it was handed down from generation to generation. And I keep the Sabbath day because God hollowed it and he set it aside for his own. Um, I don't keep it for no other reason. You know, a lot of people want to connect the seventh day with the book of Exodus and the Ten Commandments. But here in Genesis chapter 2, we see that it was already established before God written it in stone. And I just wanted to share that with you guys so that you know why we meet on a Saturday. You know, because um, we want to honor that day before God. And even though he's still at work within us. Uh, we want to be about our Father's business when it comes to the Sabbath day. Uh, I believe I sent you guys a text. Let me look it up. I sent you guys a text saying we're going to be tested on um, the fruits of the Spirit. I want to see exactly where you guys are at when... Um, um, the studies that we have been studying so far, um, dealing with Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and, and 23. And I'm going to go ahead and read that out of the Amplified Bible. Out of the Amplified Bible. Because I want to know exactly if you all are where you are at when it comes to these lessons, if we need to go over some other things um, to test if you are really paying attention to what the Lord is saying to you. Um, the other related texts for Galatians, I sent that in the study notes that I sent to you guys, and I hope that you have pulled it up and was uh, and reading from it. And looking those scriptures up. If you didn't have time, that's okay. But I want your focus to be on the fruits of the Spirit um, that God wants to develop in each one of us. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, it says, But the fruit of this, the Holy Spirit, the work which is present within accomplishes, is love. It said, The work which His precious presence accomplishes within is love. Now we must understand that the world has a type of love too, but you will find the love 
the God, God's love in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Um, let's jump to that real quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Um, I believe it starts at verse... Okay. Okay, starts at verse 4. Now, this is God's love. This is godly love. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, starting at verse 4, it says, Love endures long and is patient and kind. Love never is envious nor, bo nor, nor boils over with jealousy. Is not boastful or vainglorious, does not display itself haughtily. Haughtily means full of pride. It is not conceited, arrogant, and inflated with pride. It is not rude, unmannerly, and does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us, does not insist on its own rights or its own way. For it is not self-seeking, it is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. It does not rejoice in, at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevails. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes is ever ready to believe the best of every person. Its hopes are fadeless under all circumstances, and it endures everything without weakening. Love never fails, never fades out or becomes obsolete or comes to an end. As for prophecy, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose, it will be fulfilled and pass away. As for, the, for tongues, they will be destroyed and cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away, it will lose its value and be, and be super, superseded by truth. <clears throat> but the end result of it is love. The main things is so faith, hope, Verse 13, faith, hope, love abided, faith, conviction, and belief, respecting man's relation to God and divine things, hope, joyful and confident expectation of eternal salvation, love, true affection for God and man, growing out of God's love for and in us. These three but the greatest of these is love. The greatest of these is love, the word of God says. So the very first fruit of the Holy Spirit is love. Without love, everything that we do is meaningless. We can give to the poor we can do marvelous works for other people, but without love, it means nothing at all, period. So the first fruit is love, then joy, gladness. We're back in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Gladness, peace, patience, an even temper, forbearance, kindness, goodness, believance, Faithfulness, gentleness, meekness, humility, self-control, self-restraint, con continence, against such things there is no law that can bring a charge. And those who belong to Christ Jesus the Messiah have crucified the flesh, the godless human nature, with its passions and appetites and desire. If we live by the Holy Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. If by the Holy Spirit we have our life in God, let us go forward, walking in line 
walking in line, our conduct controlled by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we're going to, um, I'm going to read this uh, next commentary before I begin to uh, ask you guys questions. He said, what the flesh does is works without life. We, what we discussed that two weeks ago in Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. What the Spirit brings forth is fruit full of life. Only nine items of the fruit of the Spirit as different expressions of the Holy Spirit, who is life within us, are listed as illustrations here in Galatians chapter 5, verses, verses 22 to 23. The fruit of the Spirit includes additional items, such as lowliness in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2, and Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. Compassion, Philippians chapter 2, verse 1. Um, let's go to Philippians chapter 2 and verse 1. Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 reads, So by whatever appeal to you there is in our mutual dwelling in Christ, by whatever strengthening and consoling and encouraging our relationship in him affords by whatever persuasive incentive there is in love, by whatever participation in the Holy Spirit we share, and by whatever depth of affection and compassionate sympathy, fill up and complete my joy by living in harmony and being of the same mind and one in purpose, having the same love, being in full accord, and of one harmonious mind and intention. Let me stop right there for a minute. He says, being of the same mind, and one in purpose, having the same love, being in full accord, and of one harmonious mind and intention. If we have the Holy Spirit abiding on the inside of us, each one of us have that same love from the Holy Spirit. It is not different. The world's type of love is different for the world's type of love has strings attached to it. I will love you as long as you do A, B, and C. I will love you as long as you agree with everything that I say. I will love you as long as the world's type of love has strings attached to it, whereas God's love is agape. There is no strings attached to it. Glory to God. He loves us just the same. He loves us in our mess. He loves us when we fall. He loves us when we get back up and, and turn to him. He loves us. This is how God wants our love to be towards one another. No matter, uh, you know, we have disagreements because we're human, we're flesh, we're fallen. But when we are loving through the Holy Spirit, as we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, that love holds no grudges. That love always sees the best of every person, no matter what they do. And sometimes when, when, you, when, when people are constantly pounding up on you, sometimes we fail in that area. It's okay. God is able to restore but there is a difference between the love of God and the love of man, the love of the world. But here he says, fill it up and complete my joy, Paul is saying, that we are to have the same mind and one purpose. That one purpose is to live our lives for the Lord. Our one purpose 
is to have love, the same love for one another. It is not different. There's no, well, Zoe, I'll love you as long as you follow me. No, that's the world's type of love. We are to love one another irregardless. We are to forgive one another willingly. And sometimes it is hard to forgive and walk in love at the same time. And that's why we must pray to the Father and ask that he will fill our cups up, that we may be able to walk in love towards our enemy by faith, trusting that he will fill our cups up. Glory to God. As long as we take it to him in prayer, not get on Facebook, and pour out garbage about somebody on Facebook. Glory to God. And then turn to God and think that he's going to answer us. It is not our job to judge one another in an unrighteous way. It is not our job to point out one another's faults and their failures because we have all fallen short of God's glory. We are all sinners. Paul said, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Each one of us have to work out our own salvation. But each one of us are to have the same mind towards one another, have the same love towards one another. And that is sincere agape love, not the world's type of love plotting and planning and bringing division between families, lying on one another. Hallelujah. We want to develop that real agape love, the love of the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. Let us continue. Verse 3, do nothing from factional motives. Do nothing from factional motives. Motives, and I meant to look up that word factional. I'm going to look up it right. I'm going to look it up right now. Do nothing from factional motives. The word factional or faction means a group of persons forming a cohesive, usually contentious minority within a large group. Conflict within an organization, organization or nation, international dissensions, do nothing from factional motives. Um, of a faction or factions. It's really, it really doesn't have the definition that I'm looking for. Okay, the, uh, the synonyms for that is revi- revile, warring, rebellious, conflicting. In, the, in other words, don't be a faker, a faker laker, faking and pretending that you love somebody when you really don't. You can care less about what happens to them. So do nothing from factional motives through contentiousness, strife, selfishness, or for unworthy ends, or prompted by conceit and empty arrogance. He goes on to say, instead, in the true spirit of humility, lowliness of mind, let each regard the others as better than and superior to himself, thinking more highly of one another than you do of yourselves. And and that's kind of hard. That's kind of hard, and that, that will take uh, practice to do that. But we are to have compassion towards one another. We are to have love towards one another. We are to be sincere towards one another. One another. Turn your swords to Second Peter. 
2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 6. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 6. Godliness and in exercising knowledge develops self-control. In exercising knowledge develop self-control. And in exercising self-control develops steadfastness, patience, endurance. And in exercising steadfastness develop godliness, piety. Okay, righteousness, Romans chapter 14 and verse 7, and Ephesians chapter 5 verse 9. Holiness, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. Colossians chapter 1 verse 22 and purity Matthew chapter 5 and verse 8 let's go there Matthew chapter 5 and verse 8 he goes on to say at the Amplify blessed happy imitable fortunate and spiritually prosperous possessing the happiness produced by the experience of God's favor and especially conditioned by the revelation of his grace, regardless of their outward condition, are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Purity, talking about the purity of your heart, the pureness of your heart, where you think no ill towards anyone, where you think no wrong towards anyone. He says, for the pure in heart. In both Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2, and Colossians chapter 3, verse 12, lowliness is mentioned as a, vir a, vir a virtue in addition to meekness, which is listed here. In Romans chapter 14, verse 17, righteousness, peace, and joy are all aspects of the kingdom of God today. Righteousness, peace, and joy. But only peace and joy, not righteousness, are listed here. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 through 7, godliness and endurance are counted with self-control and love as characteristics of spiritual growth. Second Peter, let's go to Second Peter chapter 1, verse 5 through 7. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 5 through 7. And it reads, For this very reason, adding your diligence to the divine promises, Employ every effort in exercising your faith. This is something we are called to do. We must exercise our faith to develop virtue, excellence, resolution, Christian energy. And in exercising virtue, develop knowledge, intelligence, I have found that in today's society, when you, especially, it's real bad on Facebook, you, you post something there and they begin to put their opinions there, not even touching the subject. Each one of us have went through school and we were taught proper English about the subject, the predicates, the nouns, and have majority of the time when you talk to people, they miss the whole entire subject as if they have a lack of understanding. Here, we as believers, it says, exercising virtue, develop knowledge, intelligence. When we're discussing something, we are to always stay on the subject. What is our subject of today? The fruit of the Holy Spirit. That is the subject. Glory to God. Now, when we go left field, then something's really wrong there. Hallelujah. But we are to develop knowledge and intelligence. Verse 6, and in exercising knowledge, 
he says, develop self-control. And in exercising self-control, develop steadfastness, patience, endurance. And in exercising steadfastness, develop godliness, piety. And in exercising godliness, develop brotherly affection. And in exercising brotherly affection, develop Christian love. These are things that we should be praying about. If we're lacking in something, we should pray about these things. Father, I lack patience. I'm sorry, Father. I I, I lost my cool with that person, Father. Forgive me. Strengthen me. Show me how to exercise steadfastness and endurance. These are things that we should be praying about. These are the things that that pleases the Father because you want to develop that Christian love for all mankind, especially for those of the household of faith, which is really lacking in the body of Christ. We sit and we devour one another because we are not cultivating the fruits of the Spirit within us. We're too busy praying and asking for material things. Or, Father, we're going through something. We we are praying that God would deliver us from it. Sometimes God won't deliver us from certain things because he wants us to learn from that experience, to trust in him. He wants to develop and cultivate things in us, but... We want, we are, we're like big old giant babies. We want to get out of it. We don't want to endure. We don't want to suffer hurt. Glory to God. We don't. Instead, we'd be crying, Lord, deliver me from this thing. Deliver me. And say, Lord, what is it that you want me to learn in this situation? What are you trying to teach me, Father? Godliness and endurance are controlled with self-control and love as characteristics of spiritual growth, but they are not listed here. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 5 through 9, righteousness, mercy, and purity are reckoned with meekness and peace as the requirement of the reality of the kingdom today. However, none of the three virtues is named here in Galatians. As the flesh is the expression of the old man, so the spirit is the realization of Christ. Christ is actually lived out as the spirit. The items of the first of the fruit listed here are the very characteristics of Christ. We we want to develop the very characteristics of Christ. Hallelujah. Because the Father wants us to be transformed into the image of Christ. Christ lived the fruit of the Holy Spirit. He demonstrated it in his life. Lowliness. Matthews chapter 11. Verse 29. Matthews chapter 11 verse 29. It reads out the Amplified. He says, Take my yoke up on you and learn of me. Take my yoke up on you And learn of me, for I am gentle, meek, and humble, lowly in heart, and you will find rest, relief, and ease, and refreshment, and recreation, and blessed quiet for your souls. We're so busy, the church is so busy learning about these other things, they have yet and failed to learn about our Savior. Yeshua, he says, take my yoke up on you 
and learn of me. We are to learn about our Savior. The song that I sang, that I played by um, um, Kerry Cobbs, The More I Seek You, I Want to Sit at Your Feet, I Want to Lay My Head Upon Your Breast and Hear Your Heartbeat. She was saying, I want to learn more about you. I want to be more close to you. This is what we as believers in Christ, we're supposed to learn about our Lord and Savior, to develop his character, to be in his likeness. Glory to God. It is is many voices in the world today, especially religious voices today. Glory to God, where they are drawing people away from Christ to themselves, to material things. But here Christ wants you to learn about him. He wants you to learn how he is meek and gentle and humble and lowly in heart. And when we are like him, when we are walking with him and he is walking through us, then will we find rest and relief and ease and refreshment and recreation and blessed quietness for our souls. But as long as we are seeking after things of this world, we won't have those things. We won't have peace. He says, verse 30, for my yoke is wholesome, useful, good, not harsh, hard, sharp or pressing, but comfortable, gracious and pleasant, and my burden is light and easy to be brawn. To be lowly is to remain in, in a lower state, and to be meek is, not, is to not fight for oneself. In other words, allowing God to fight your battles. Allowing God to fight your battles. That we are not, we are as sheep led to the slaughter. Christ was as a sheep led to the slaughter. He did not open his mouth in defense for himself. We are to be the same. Just because a person does not reply back to you doesn't mean that they're guilty of anything. We are not to fight for ourselves, but to hand it over to the Creator, to the all the, the one that can fight your battles. We should exercise these two virtues in dealing with ourselves. To be long-suffering is to endure mistreatment. To be long-suffering is to endure mistreatment. Hallelujah. This is why it's so important that, that we love on one another because, you know, even when you endure mistreatment, even when a person is sick, and uh, well, Stevie, you should know more about that, about when you go into war, you get injured, and you have to be doctored upon. But if you're constantly in battle, I mean constantly, you, you're suffering hits and blows from here and there, and you, you have no reinforcements to come in and to mend up those wounds, Eventually, you're going to get angry. This is why it's important when one of our brothers and sisters come to us about matters of the heart, that we listen, not only listen to what they're saying, but that we be tuned to what the Holy Spirit is saying. How can I help my brother? How can I pour the healing balm of Gilead upon their hurts that they may heal properly? We never should tear somebody that's already broken down. We should never kick someone to the curve when they're already kicked to the curve. That's not the love of God. 
Even then, uh, Jesus gave an illustration about the Good Samaritan. I will have to find that story for you so I can share it with you so you can read it. But it was a man that was coming. He was coming from worship in Jerusalem. And he fell, thieves fell up on him, beat him almost to death, took all his stuff. And the word of God said, Jesus said that three religious folks walked by him, did not bother to assist, did not bother to help. But one Samaritan took his brother, he was doing the godly thing, took his brother, mended his wounds. Not only that, put him up in an inn and paid for his stay. That was the Christian thing to do. But nowadays, we get kicked down. We Man, that is not the way of Christ. When a brother or sister is hurting, we should be able to go to our brother and sister to receive comfort, to receive strength, to receive uh, uplifting, uh, to receive restoration. We should be able to do that. But many today in the, in the church world are fleshly. They're walking in the flesh. We read about the flesh in the beginning of Galatians. But God wants us, the chosen, and there's very few that are that is walking the narrow path, that are chosen. He wants us to bear the have the fruits of the Spirit that we would truly walk as Christ had walked. But we have to learn about Christ first. We have to develop the fruit of the Spirit on the inside of us and do what the Word says. He says to be long-suffering is to endure mistreatment. We should exercise this virtue in dealing with others. By these virtues, we bear not just tolerant, we tolerate one another. That is, we do not forsake the troublesome ones, but bear them in love. And we must pray and ask God, how, how can we do this? How are we supposed to do this? This is the expression of life, to bear one another in love, to love. So we can, we, oftentimes we have to love people from a distance, pray for them, that they will come unto the true revelation, knowledge of Yeshua HaMashiach. There is a false Christ in the church that is totally opposite from what we are learning here today. Compassion. Compassion. Um, we read Philippians chapter 2 verse 1. We're going to go to Colossians chapter 3 and verse 12. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 12. Here we are commanded to do something. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 12 reads out the Amplified. Clothe yourselves therefore. This is something that we must do as God's own chosen ones, his own picked representatives. You are representative of God. You are representative of God. You represent the Father. Who are purified and holy and well-beloved by God himself by putting on behavior marked by tender-hearted pity and mercy, kind feeling, a lowly opinion of yourself, gentle ways, and patient, which is 
tireless and long-suffering and has the power to endure whatever comes with good temper. Here we are commanded to put these things on. Putting on behavior that is marked by tender-hearted pity and mercy. Showing mercy and kindness to those in need. Thinking more highly of others than yourself. Having a lowly opinion of yourself. That you are gentle. You have gentle ways. You're not harsh. Angry and full of bitterness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Always tearing someone down when they come seeking your counsel. Proverbs says, in the multitude of counsels, there is safety. Godly counsel, that is. They're supposed to be, they, they're supposed to feel safe when they're receiving your counsel, godly counseling. There is ungodly counseling. So it's good, and, and, and what Proverbs says, King Solomon says that it's good when you seek counsel. But we must seek godly counsel. And how do you tell the difference when, you, when that person is not tearing you down and making you feel real dumb and stupid, make you regret that you even picked up the phone to call them? Godly counsel will minister to your soul and your spirit, will tell you who you are in Christ Jesus and what he has done for you. Godly counsel, that is. Worldly counsel always counsels from the flesh. Listens to his own self. There, you can tell the difference when someone is really ministering to you from the Holy Spirit that dwells on the inside of you. Welcome, Deborah and uh, Tasha. We're in Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 and 13. All right. So in verse 12, we are commanded to clothe ourselves, to put on behavior that is marked by tenderheartedness. You can tell when someone generally cares about you. They really have a heart for you. You can tell the difference. Let's go down to... Uh, Verse 13, Colossians. Oh, I'm not finished with verse 12. He says, uh, gentle ways and patient which is tireless and long-suffering. We must learn to be tireless and have long-suffering for one another. That's when when come when you think lowly of yourself. Everybody's not like you. Everyone did not come from the same background that you came from. Everyone did not get the same upbringing as you did. So what if they called you three or four times out of a day? We are to give them assistance. With a pure heart, not complaining in our heart, oh, I'm just so tired of this person. That's not God. We should be happy that God, first of all, placed us on that person's heart to call us. Because obviously God said that this, you have the answer that this person needs. 
But we are to bear with our brothers and sisters with long suffering and have the power to endure whatever comes our way with a good temper. All of this is cultivating of the spirit on the inside of us. But if we're focused on things of this world, you will never cultivate this ground to be able to walk the word, to be kind towards people. When you have, when you have the spirit of Christ, when the spirit of Christ develops fully on the inside of you, you begin to sound like him. Verse 13, he said, be gentle and forbearing with one another. Be gentle and forbearing with one another. Uh, the word forbearing. Uh-oh, I spelled it wrong. Forbearing. Forbearing with one another. To forbear means to keep oneself from doing something. Hold back. Refrain. Forbearing. To be tolerant or patient in the face of provocation. To be tolerant or patient in the face of provocation. To refrain from. Resist. To refrain oneself so as not to do something. And I'm taking not to do something negative. We must learn to forbear with one another. The adjective of uh, forbearing is the adjective of a forbear, which means formal, showing self-control and patience. Forbearing, that's the adjective. Showing patience and unraffled self-control, restraint under adversity. That's good. Restraint under adversity, slow to retaliate or express resentment, enduring, trying, circumstances with an even temper or characterized by such endurance. Be gentle and forbearing with one another. And I'm going to be honest with you, y'all. Peeps, some people can really, man, they, ooh, they, they make you want to choke them up. But here we are to Put on gentleness and forbearing with one another. And if one has a difference, a grievance or complaint against another, readily pardoning each other. Even as the Lord has freely forgiven you, you must, so must you also Forgive. You know when you hold resentment and unforgiveness in your heart, you know that that brings sickness to your body. Unforgiveness causes cancer in your body. All kind of ailments. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you're holding grudges and unforgiveness, you, you open the doors for the enemy to come in. When you're walking around with unforgiveness and resentment. But if you take time and think about all the things that God has forgiven you for, how unworthy we really are. 
then we won't have the audacity not to forgive someone that offends us. And and it, it, it's like a cancer in within the body of Christ. We need to learn the ways of the master. Verse 14, and above all these, put on love and enfold yourselves with the bond of perfectness, which binds everything together completely in ideal harmony. God said, be ye perfect, for I am perfect. So he would not tell us to do something if we were not capable of doing it. But we are capable of being perfect. Why? Because we have the Holy Spirit dwelling on the inside of us. And he's not talking about the perfection that the world talks about. He's talking about the perfectness of the Holy Spirit, walking by the Spirit and in the Spirit. Learning of Yahshua, learning who your Lord and Savior is, and mimicking him. That's why I say that every born again believer, new babe in Christ, need to study the old the New Testament first. Engulf yourself in the New Testament first because it gives you instructions on how to live the Christian life, how to be like Christ. Okay. Where was we at? Ephesians. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 32. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 32. We're going to read verse 31 first. Let me see. No, let's go up to verse 30. Oh, let's go. Let's keep on up. Let's go up to verse twenty six. We'll go up to verse twenty six. This one is good. We're dealing with um, compassion. Ephesians chapter 4, starting at verse 26, reads out the Amplified Classic. When angry, do not sin. Do not ever let your wrath, your aspiration, your fury, or indignation last until the sun goes down. In other words, you deal with that situation in your heart before the sun goes down. Forgive that brother or sister before the sun goes down. Hallelujah. Where do we sin at? When we get so angry, we begin to spread those, those, that anger. We begin to spread that anger to other people. We begin to talk about that individual person, tearing that individual down to other people. Now we have committed a sin because we allowed our anger to take us there where we shouldn't have went there instead of just forgiving. We can be angry. Ang anger is not the sin. It's what you do with that anger. Sometimes people get so angry that they go and murder you can murder someone by the words that come out your mouth. You don't have to physically do it, but you can speak something out of your mouth and you're committing murder. You can get real angry and do things <laughs> that you will regret. Instead of just, okay, being angry for a minute, you, you know what I mean, take it to God. Take it to God. I mean, they've done something. Take it to God. 
If you're going to vent your anger, vent that anger to God so that he, hallelujah, can pour his grace upon you. Ask him to forgive you, forgive that other person. But when we can't forgive, we should never allow our anger to bring us to the point where we cannot pray for that individual person. Okay, verse 27, leave no such room. He said, leave no such room or foothold for the devil. Give no opportunity to him. He says, leave no room. Close that door immediately before the sun goes down. So he's giving you all day to deal with that anger. Leave no such foothold hold for the devil to be able to come in and, and plant some other things. You you constantly you're pondering on it, you're thinking about, oh, what this person has done, oh you just oh, you just consumed by it. Which leads you into murdering which leads you into all un kind of ungodly things, it opens a door for the enemy to take a foothold within your heart. So we must, must deal with that immediately. Verse 28, let the thief steal no more, but rather let him be industrious, making an honest living with his own hands, so that he may be able to give to those in need. The reason why God blesses us financially so that we can give to those in need. Hallelujah. Verse 29, let no foul or polluting language, nor evil word, nor unwholesome or worthless talk ever come out of your mouth, but only such speech as is good and beneficial to the spiritual progress of others. Highlight that in your Bibles. He says, let no foul or polluting language, nor evil word, nor wholesome or worthless talk ever come out of your mouth, but only such speech as is good and beneficial to the spiritual progress of others as is fitting to the need and the occasion that it may be a blessing and give grace, God's favor, to those who hear it. Every so often, little Stevie, he would call me and encourage me. ever so often that minister to my soul. We as believers should come to that place where we are refreshing, blessing, and giving God's grace and favor upon those that need it. Glory to God. Verse 30, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Do not offend or vex or sadden him by whom you were sealed, marked, branded as God's own, secured. Those of you that have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you have been sealed by God himself. You belong to him. Now, if you don't, if you have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit, the Word of God in Romans said that you are none of His. Many in the church today have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. But when you're baptized, you have been sealed, you have been marked, you have been branded as God's own, secure. Just like the uh, cowboys on a, on, a, on a ranch have cattle. They brand their cattle with a seal 
to let other people know this belongs to me. Have you been filled with the Holy Spirit? You have been sealed. You belong to God. You no longer belong to the world or the prince of this world. You belong to God. For the day of redemption, of final deliverance from, from, through Christ, from evil and the consequences of sin. You have been sealed until the day of redemption. The day of redemption is when Christ returns, when the king returns for those he have branded and sealed. He's coming back. He's not coming back for those that, that, that profess his name. He's coming back for those that have been marked, that have been branded and sealed by the Holy Spirit. Verse uh, 31, once again, this is something that we are commanded to do. Let all bitterness and indignation and wrath, passion, rage, bad temper and resentment, anger, animosity and quarreling, browling, clamoring, contention and slander, evil speaking, abusive or blasphemous language be banished from you. All of these are parts of the flesh that we read in Galatians. Chapter 5, verse 19 to 21. These are all works of the flesh. He said, be banished from you. We are to banish these things from us. With all malice, spite, ill will, or baseness of any kind, we are to let those things go. Verse 32, which is our main one, he said, dealing with compassion and become useful and helpful and kind to one another, tenderhearted, compassionate, understanding, lovinghearted, forgiving one another readily and freely as God in Christ forgave you. It is so important that we walk in forgiveness, that we forgive. Inward parts of compassion, tenderness, lowliness, meekness, and long-suffering are part of the holy, the fruit of the Spirit. Let's go back to Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Let's go back there. Okay, I'm going to start with little Stevie first. If you're following along in the notes with me, uh, we'll pick back up on um, Colossians chapter 3 and verse 12. If you're following along with me. But we're going to start with little Stevie. Um, little Stefan, what uh, so far from the classes that we have had starting uh, the class on the, the spirit, soul, and body. What have you learned thus far, and how have you put the fruit of the spirit in operation in your life? Stefan? He must be away from the phone. <laughs> okay. All right, we'll move on. Zoe, same question. I would try to use those qualities in my everyday living and learning as I'm trying to get closer to God, like as in my gentleness and self-control and be more loving and be more lowly and humble, um, more forgiving and patient. I would try to incorporate those things in, like, my home life, my work life, you know, just personal, personal attributions that I would probably use to help me better myself. 
Okay. Throughout, uh, since we began this study, um, what, what challenges have you had since we started this study? Being more observant, I would say, and, like, how I would approach a challenge. Like, I, mm, uh, being more, what's the word? I can't, it's just at the tip of my tongue. I can't say it. It's the challenges I face is not being able to recognize certain things that I would need to work on as in far as seeing in other people and in myself. Okay. Knowing, like knowing when to, how to approach a situation without being, you know, the old me, like if I was to just, instead of reacting you know, my past ways, I would react in this, you know, the godly way and not be so angry or so confused mm-hmm. if that makes any sense. Okay. Um, okay, Zoe. Thank you. Latasha. Hello. <laughs> All right, Stefan, I'm going to repeat the question. <laughs> Pete, a question to you. Sorry, my my speaker. Like I, I bought a do, a new speaker that I was just trying out, and the microphone, I guess, doesn't work on it like it's supposed to. So I just had to grab a whole nother speaker and shut mm-hmm. all that up because I was saying hello and it just wasn't going through. So I heard the oh. question, so I can go ahead. Oh, okay, um, cause you keep going in and out. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got to get a different setup. But the question that you're asking was how, what have I learned from the mind, body, and soul, you know, this series that we've been doing and how have I uh, placed it into action? Uh, Some of the key things that I learned when we first started doing this was how we have to allow the spirit to, in a sense, take control over what we're hearing and how we're processing, you know, outside information. Um, and then secondly, after we do that, allow the Spirit to, you know, fill us with that, that Holy Spirit, then it gives us a way to start to translate, you know, the Bible and the scriptures that we're reading. They start to speak out to you more in the sense they start to relate to your everyday life so that you're given a defense mechanism to recognize when you're being attacked. Um, uh-huh. And that was a big thing for me, to start to recognize when things are actually coming so that I'm not just, you know, blindsided and, you know, now there's no more excuse of saying, you know, I, I didn't know what to do. Well, you know what to do. If you're allowing that spirit to, to speak to you and you're listening to it, then it'll tell you when something's going on if you choose to listen. So once I started to do that, then it was allowing me to get more in-depth with where you said that, well, now we're understanding that everything's backwards. It's supposed to be you know, the spirit comes first, then the soul, and then the body, not the mind, body, and soul, or however else people decide that they want to do it. Um, you're supposed to let the spirit take control first, and that's supposed to help guide your soul, and then your soul is supposed to help control, you know, and guide the flesh, which is just a carrier for, you know, the soul and the spirit. Mm. So once you're able to take that from the lessons and try to apply that and let the spirit take control the mistakes I was making in everyday life, I started to see them go down in a sense where I wasn't doing as many things wrong as when I was presented with this day, I'm finding that I'm able to more successfully um, than I was before. So mm-hmm. now I'm, I'm being tested, I'm being challenged now every day, but at least it's not the same old process, I guess. Um, and then uh, we also learned um, about how the new thing that we're learning today, which was to the fruits. And the fruits that I, I, I learned this today, which the description uh, was that it, it bluntly tells us what type of aspects we should strive for, what 
you know, type of actions we should be trying to display, which is, you know, the compassion, the joyfulness, uh, caring, you know, those type of things. And then it also states at the end of those, those scriptures, and, and as you were stating in the lesson, that at the end of all that, there's some things that are worth, you know, doing this for, that you're not doing this for no reason. You're doing it because it is the hard thing to do. But at the end of the day, you're happy and proud about what you did because it was the hard thing to do, because you didn't just take the easy way out and just go with anger and frustration and you decided mm-hmm. to stay calm, you know, keep your head about, you know, and not just choke somebody out, you know, mm-hmm. that's the that helps you at the end of the day to keep you going. So that's what I've been learning from this few sessions and what's been, you know, how I've been applying it in my everyday life is, you know, I'm able to view situations differently than I would before. And like Zoe was saying, I, I find that I respond, you know, differently than the old me would have responded. So it, it gives me a chance to try and make up and redeem myself, you know, instead of modeling in, in, in my sorrow about, you know, oh, well, I messed up everything today, so, you know, there's no point. And it's like I don't, I don't want to be that person. I'd rather be the person that says, you know, I'm, I'm fighting the battles today. I may have lost one, you know, but the war is still going on. You know? Amen. So, Amen. That's, 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 that's awesome. Hey, y'all, maybe we should have a little Stevie teach the class. What y'all think? <laughs> <laughs> I just love how he comprehends things. Yeah. You know? And, yes. And then we should follow his example. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, Latasha. I'm not perfect at all, but I have a whole that I'm constantly trying to work on. So I'm I'm just, the comprehension, I appreciate all that, and the, the comments is just, I, I'm the, the only reason I'm able to start to comprehend these things is by the help of these, you know, these lessons. Because it's, it's giving me at least the first way to fix a problem is to admit that you have a problem. So I'm able now Amen. to admit that I have problems. And finally, the spirit is able to say, okay, well, now that you recognize what I've been trying to tell you, now I can help you try to fix these problems if you want to use your free will, you know, to do the hard things that it mm. takes to, to battle these battles. So just listen to me, stick with me. And, you know, we'll make it through this. And it goes in all those scriptures where, you know, you walk through the valley, you know, you're all in the dark, but you're not alone, all that other good stuff. It's like it, that's what all that means is you're not alone. You're mm-hmm. going to be walking through the dark. The point of this is a test. So, you know, we can't just get the power of anybody. You have to earn it by proving that you can withstand these trials and small tribulations because when you get out there and up there where the real stuff's going down, it's not going to be easy cupcakes like this. So, right. I love it. I love it. What he said, the key thing is you have to admit that you have a problem. You have the best part of thinking lowly that you have to admit that you need Jesus. We 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 in this in this human flesh we are not perfect, but looking through fleshly eyes, I have had people tell me, "Oh, you think you all that? No, I don't. You have no idea how I beat myself up." But because they're looking through fleshly eyes. And I think majority of us on this line, we beat ourselves up. And it's not to degrade ourselves or lower ourselves, but we're, we're admitting, Lord, I need your help. That's same with an alcoholic. If they don't admit that they have a problem, they would never get delivered. That be, that comes with alcohol or anything. A person that has a food binge, they have problem eating or with food. If they don't admit, that's with anything. If we do not, if they cannot come to the point that they admit that they have a problem, so little Stevie said, then the Holy Spirit can't help you. That's the key. 
We I'm have years. Huh? Uh, what is child? I'm sorry, you blanking out, son. No, because I know I had to cut uh, Tosh off. Tosh is going to talk. I wanted to hear Tosh because I like what Zoe has said. You know, I wanted to, I wanted to hear uh, okay, Tosh. Okay, go ahead, Tasha. You. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Tasha. What I'm for sure. I don't. What? What? Um, I'm here. What is it that I'm supposed to be responding to? <laughs> repeat, repeat the question to us, Stevie. Um, what have you learned from the the lessons, the the whole series that we've been going through, and then how have you uh, applied it, um, or you know, tried to apply it in your life, and how you've been using it? Um, one big thing I think for me was one of the first lessons we learned on the trials and tribulations and enduring them. And um, that is really a big lesson for me these days is enduring the things that I go through and talking to God about it and not other people um, and allowing him to give me the answers that I need to help me get through the different trials and tribulations that I go through, that I go through, I mean, um, that was my biggest thing also, how to see things in a positive perspective, to see things the way that Christ would have me see them, and being able to to, to determine the difference um, and what is of God and what is not. And that was another lesson for me on my growth journey because, not everything that I do is of God, and those are the things that I needed to work on for myself to continue to grow. Um, there's things that I cannot continue to do um, if I truly wish to grow and draw close, closer to God. Um, also, being in a position to be able to help someone first, I have to help myself, and that was a big thing for me as well. I have to acknowledge what I needed to work on and what God needed me to see. And I've learned a lot of lessons through dealing with a lot of my trials and tribulations. May it be uh, going through something personal or through someone else. Um, it's just really helping me to not only be more positive and think positive first about a situation because I had a habit of thinking negative. It was drawing me that way. Um, I came in on the end of this lesson, um, but I did hear something um, that mom had said, and I think for me, I the things that I was going through was, was taking me down the wrong road. So I had to stop and actually talk to God and and ask him to remove the feelings that I was starting to get. And mm-hmm. and I realized that it was taking me down the wrong path, and that's not of God. God wouldn't send me down the wrong path. He wouldn't, he wouldn't lead me to go backwards. And so I have to stop and stop thinking and looking at everything else around me and pay attention to myself for a second and what it is in the direction that God wants me to go. And it made me feel better. So now taking on these lessons that we've been learning, um, like I say, I'm still in the beginning of the lessons. Like the first couple of lessons that we're on is where I'm at in my growth process, the endurance Mm -hmm. of the trials and tribulations. I'm still learning how to endure and handle the trials and tribulations that I go through. And I think once I get that down pat, I'll be able to take on everything else that we've learned because we've learned a lot on we've learned a lot um, in these lessons and they all reach out to me and I think for you know to help myself to not go backwards I really have to practice enduring and how to use the tools that he gives us to handle different things that I go through because 
I, I be drained, but I know that he gives me what I need to get through it. Sometimes I'm tired. Sometimes I don't know what to do, but I know he gives us the tools to get through everything that we go through, no matter how we may feel. Sometimes those feelings may be negative, and we have to put those feelings to the side and talk to God and see what he would have us to do because nine times out of ten it's going to go against that negative felt because it's not of God. God wouldn't want us to feel negative about anything that we go through, even though he knows that sometimes it'll be hard for us and we have to fight against those things and do what he would want us to do to get through whatever it is that we're going through. Amen. Outstanding. Amen. Uh, Deborah. Okay. Well, I've learned that um, how important the Holy Spirit is. I know when I first uh, went to a camp meeting, I was uh, practicing Catholic then, and. Um, at that camp meeting, I, now I knew I had a relationship with God, but I also knew that they had something that I didn't have. I didn't understand it at that time that it was the Holy Spirit, but I knew I wanted it. But I couldn't explain what it was that I wanted because I didn't know. As I continued to grow in God and in his word, I realized how important the Holy Spirit actually was. I am, oh, my God. Um, can you all hold on one moment? I'm sorry. That's why I wasn't on the call today because I was picking up calls. I'm so sorry. Just a moment. Okay. Did you guys, was you guys able to pull up the lesson from your phone? Mm. The notes? Um, I got them. Oh, okay. Because they have all the they have all the scriptures and things in there. So, okay. Well, we wait on Deborah. We don't come back. We'll move, we'll move on. Uh, Colossians chapter three and verse twelve. Thank you guys for your input and for your input, because okay. uh, it's so important um, that we we share with one another, uh, so that we can pray for one another um, where we're at. God will meet us where we're at. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter three verse twelve. We read that already, but I'm going to read it out of the uh, the Passion um, Translation. He says, you are always and dearly loved by God, so robe yourselves with virtues of God. You back, Deborah? Yes, yes, I'm back. Oh, okay, go ahead. Okay, so I, I've learned how important it is to, um, you know, allow the Holy Spirit to do his job in your life. And um, as far as like the fruits, you know, with uh, allowing those fruits to grow on the inside of me, I've learned that is, well, I've learned that I am quick to hear and slow to speak. I've learned how to do that. So many of us are going through so much. In that going through, a lot of times we won't even, you know, I, I heard uh, see, I, I heard everyone make the statement about um, the things that we're go, going through is so hard sometimes for us. And one thing I have noticed, not so much with those who are learning the word, but dealing with the people outside of the word or partially learning the word and not practicing it, is that when we do make mistakes, we don't admit to them so we can move on. Like Stephen was saying, we we don't say, okay, Lord, 
I did make this mistake, and I need your help. As if it's some kind of cruel thing to happen to us. We're going to make mistakes, and we need to understand that. And like I said, it, 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 there are some individuals, they're saints, but they're not using the resources of God to grow by, like this class that we have. Not taking out the time to put yourself in a position where you will hear the word so you can take that word and begin to practice it so your life can change. Not, not um, leaning on the Holy Spirit to guide you making the mistakes and saying, okay, well, I wouldn't have done that if this person hadn't did that or thinking that they caused you. You know, even with I heard you all mention about anger, it's okay for us to get angry, but sin not. But we get in these situations where we get disappointed or upset with someone and not knowing, which is one of the fruits, not knowing how to control our anger, not waiting on the Holy Spirit, not listening first and then um, speaking about whatever the situation is, and we step right over into sin. And I mean, it could be as small as starting off with saying to something to somebody they don't like it, and now you're going back and forth with tit for tat, and it turns tragic, or it turns in a, um, to a point where, okay, now you need to go and ask God to forgive you because you stepped a little bit too far. So I, I've learned with my hearing first and then speaking because sometimes I could hear what someone is saying, misinterpret it, and then speak. So I've learned to be more open with, um, with hearing from the Holy Spirit. That person may not have meant it like that. Or that person may have been going through something that particular day, so that person said something harsh to me. So instead of me responding to what they said with harsh words, I will find a scripture that may encourage them in whatever it is that they're going through. I may remind them, okay, the Holy Spirit, or God, or, you know, like I said, give a scripture, share a story with them that I may have gone through. So th these are the things that I'm uh, allowing to continue to enhance what I am learning in God. It is just so important to be yielded to the Holy Spirit. It will squash a lot of things and situations that we will find or either get ourselves in. Just being patient. And like you said, most of all, the love. That love. And love doesn't take offense. And, and, and I notice, like even in my own household, you know to walk in love, but yet you take offense to what someone said. So what if they said it? If they meant it in a harsh way, let God deal with it. But you keep yourself straight so God won't have to deal with you. And like I said, just, just even admitting, okay, I made a mistake. Instead of making an excuse about the mistake you made, even if you respond harshly back to someone, okay, I missed it, Lord. I missed it, Holy Spirit. I need to go back. Help me. Go back and share with them and say, look, I'm sorry. I should not have responded to you like that. Not I should not have responded to you like that because, but I should not have responded to you like that. So in a nutshell, that's what I'm learning, and that's how I am applying it to my life. Turn me the whole way. Okay. Amen. 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 But what are you learning from doing these classes here? That's what I'm saying. What oh, I'm okay. learning from doing those classes there okay. is how important it is for us to yield to the Holy Spirit uh -huh. and how important it is for us bearing those fruits. And like okay. most of all, love. 
loving one another. Because when you love, you're going to have patience with each other. You're going to encourage one another when when that individual is, is going through. You know, you understand what I'm saying? Uh-huh. These are, this is what I've learned with our classes. And this is how, and that's how I apply it. Okay. Class, like I said, you know, just being so uh, um, conscious of the yeah. Holy Spirit and moving according to the Holy Spirit. Yeah, because we want to be different from the world, not like the world. Right. Um, Colossians chapter 3, verse 12, out of the Passion the translation reads, you are always and dearly loved by God. We must know that we are always loved by God. There is no strings attached to God's love. So robe yourself. We are to robe ourselves with with virtues of God, and and the fruit of the Holy Spirit are virtues of God. Since you have been divinely chosen to be holy, be merciful as you endeavor to understand others. We must understand other people. We must understand, you know, their life. They have they walked in different shoes than we have. Have have lived in different ways than we have lived. Have come up in different ways. Have been through some things that we have not been through, by the grace of God. Um, and be compassionate, showing kindness toward all. Be gentle and humble, unoffendable in your patience with others. The Greek word has the same origin as moved with compassion. In Matthews chapter 9, verse 36, out of the Amplified Bible reads, When he saw the thrones, he was moved with pity and sympathy for them. In the King James it says he was moved with compassion because they were bewildered, harassed, and distressed, and dejected and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. So we we are to be moved with compassion for people. I tell you, on my job sometimes, you know, people come in and they they will basically tell me their life story, (laughs) just telling me their life story, the things that they are going through. You know, if one lady came in and she uh, she shared with me something that she went through, I tell you, I had to fight the tears back. Because it touched my heart, you know, and and I end up, you know, praying for her. I didn't get to that point that, you know, if God sends someone my way, and I know they got cameras on us, I got to that point, I don't care. You know, if someone needs God, say, pray for this person, I'm going to pray for that person. You know, in certain companies, you're not supposed to do that. But I'm at that point, I don't care. Because I know that God has my back. You know, and we, we, we have to have compassion for people, sympathy for people. We, we're we not supposed to have that attitude where she deserved it. You know, you have people in the church that's like that. You know, making assumptions. Assumptions is a sin, and you'll find that in Proverbs. Assuming is a sin. But we want to understand people. We want to understand what they're going through. Have patience with them. Glory to God. And really show genuine love towards them through the Holy Spirit. All right. The the Greek word has the same origin as moved with compassion in Matthew chapter 9, verse 36. And inward parts in Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 8, Philippians chapter 1 and verse 8, which reads out the Amplified, For God is my witness, how I long for and pursue you with love, you all with love, and the tender mercy of Christ Jesus himself. Paul, he was loving on these Philippians. 
He longed to be in their presence. He longed to be with them. Verse 9, and this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more and extend to its fullest development in knowledge and all keen insight, that your love may display itself in greater depths of acquaintances and more comprehensive discernment. We can get so deep, be so connected in the spirit that you could actually hear someone else's spirit. When we're so tight-knit with God, we can minister from God, from his spirit to another individual person, hit it dead on the nail. People nowadays, they don't have discernment. They make excuses for not having it. Oh, and they'll use scripture too. Here a little, there a little. No, you totally messed that up. We as believers are to walk in discernment, even when it comes to our brothers and sisters. The Holy Spirit will instruct you and tell you what that individual person needs. If we ask, we need to learn not to minister out of the flesh. Have the majority of the time, people are ministering out of the flesh. Give you a good example, mother on Facebook. Mother uh, complaining about her daughter-in-law. Oh, man, she just tore her down. Just tore, tore her down. And, and, and how um, what, what this woman was doing with her son and all this. And you know what the Holy, and, and then she at the end she says, can you all pray? Pray for them because I'm too angry to pray. Holy Spirit said, I want you to deal with the anger part. I told her, I'm going to pray for you. See, because if you're that angry that you cannot pray for your daughter-in-law, then that means you're walking in unforgiveness. Believe it or not, you guys, I man, I got man, I got attacked because I said that by so-called religious folks. Just throwing out they wasn't dealing with the they were condoning her anger. They wasn't dealing with the anger. They even joined in with her calling the young level a de- devil. She's a Jezebel. She's this. She's that. The bottom point and line of it is her son made that decision to marry this young lady. Mom should have just asked, can y'all pray for me because I'm feeling anger. I'm angry about who my son married, this and that and this and that. That's when I've told you guys how sin, uh, anger can lead to sin. But I got attacked because I'm dealing, God wants to deal with the mom's anger so that she'll be able to pray for her son's marriage. As long as we are angry, walking in unforgiveness, God won't hear our prayer. I don't care what nobody say. He will not hear it. The a book of Psalms says that David said, if I hide iniquity in my heart, you will not hear from me. So God wanted to deal with her anger first. To be angry and sin not. Whatever's going on in your son's marriage or however she's treating your son, forgive her and pray for her that she would come into the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Total opposite. That's what I mean, that they get on Facebook and they bash other people out in the same token asking for prayer. God want to deal with a lot of things. But we're not to walk in unforgiveness and then spew out our anger on, on a social media site. And then you got people joining in with her. 
That's not God. That's not God at all. That was not godly advice. And then the young, then another lady told me that I was giving her worldly advice. But God wants to deal with the mob anger. Okay, go, go, godliness. Second Pete, how long we been on here? Oh, okay, it's almost time. It's time to go, y'all. Yes, it's time to. Let me see how long we've been on here. Uh, uh, quite a while. So we're going to pick up next week. We're on page four. We're going to pick up on godliness, righteousness, goodness, holiness. Still dealing with the fruits of the Spirit. Uh, on your own time, go back to Galatians, um, chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. Look up the scriptures um, that's in the notes and write down your own notes. Get yourself a diary. Write down your own notes of what the Lord had, had, had shared with you, what he has spoken to you. See, because I don't have it all, y'all. Believe it or not, I got a toothache. I got an assess in my tooth. My whole body is hurting. My back hurts real bad. I, from Thursday, the, from the time I got off the work up until today, I've been in the bed. Just hurting. But I made a commitment to God and I made a commitment to you guys. So I got up. But you guys can um, get yourself a diary as you do these lessons. Begin to write down what the Lord is sharing with you, what he is speaking to your heart. Glory to God. I know that my time um, that I uh, uh, had spent in, in, in jail, I was definitely in the school of the Holy Spirit. Nonstop, that I was consumed with knowing who my Lord and Savior is. Be consumed with who your Lord and Savior is. Watch who you are listening to. Be careful. Please, guys, be careful. There's so many wolves in sheep clothing, especially on Facebook. Especially on Facebook. Be careful. Ask the Lord to put that deep desire in your heart to know him. And he will do it. To consume you. To consume your every being. And the more you learn of him, the more you become like him. But there is a warning. The more you become like Christ, the more people are going to hate you. The more people ain't going to want to have nothing to do with you, the more you become like Christ, the more they're going to talk about you, the more they're going to reject you. Even the church, those that claim they call on the Lord, the closer you get to Christ, hallelujah, the repercussions that Jesus said, if they hated me, they will hate you also. Talking about the world. The Sadducees and the Pharisees, they knew the law of God. They knew the word of God. But yet when God came on the scene, they did not recognize him. So we don't want to take on the spirit of the Sadducees and the Pharisees. We want to be able to recognize our Savior when he comes. And that's being like him. Uh, somebody want to close us out in prayer? Anybody? Okay, Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for your word on today, oh, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, for the spirit of truth, O oh Lord. We thank you, Father, for a fresh and filling of your spirit that will get us by this week, O oh Lord. 
We thank you, Lord, that as we seek your face on a daily basis, Lord, as we seek to know you, Father, and sometimes it's just being silent before you, Father, that you would speak back unto us, O Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are the regulator of our lives, O Father, that you are the transformer of our lives, O Father, that you are transforming us into the image of Christ. Thank you, Lord, that you are giving us the strength, the wisdom, and the know-how, Father, to walk in your word and to allow the Holy Spirit to cultivate his fruits within us. Father, may we experience the spirit of joy this week. Father, may it bubble in us and out of us, O oh Lord. May we walk with a smile on our face, Lord, and not an up-down side face, Father, smile. We thank you for the word on today. Father, I ask that you supply everyone's need on this line, O oh Lord God. Father, if any are sick, that you would touch and heal, O oh Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are providing the substance of food and clothing that we need, O oh Lord. Thank you that you provide a roof over our heads, O oh Father. Thank you that you are with us wherever we go. Thank you, Yahweh. In the name of your son, Yeshua, Hamashiach, we pray. Amen. 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 All right, guys. Amen. Oh,